Welcome again to another milling training video from DAPRA, your provider of high-performance American-made milling tools. Today, we're talking about long-reach end mills and how to overcome the challenges of chatter and deflection that are typically present with these types of cutting tools. There are times in life when we want a little springiness in the tools we're using, but with cutting tools, that's generally not the case. Deflection is the number one problem with long reach milling, and it can cause a variety of problems for our application. One is poor finish due to chatter. That chatter could also damage our cutting tool, or at the very least cause shorter tool life. Another issue with deflection is that our part can come out undersized due to the cutting edge pushing away from the part profile, or we can end up with a tapered workpiece for the same reason. Using long reach tooling is at times unavoidable, so let's talk about ways we can get through it successfully. There are many ways that we can effectively deal with long reach applications. Our tool selection allows us to use the best diameter, length, pitch, and cutting edge that will reduce cutting forces. The cutting tool material we choose can help as well, with some materials offering greater rigidity than others. The tool type is also a factor, with some types of tools creating more or less pressure than others, or redirecting the pressure in a more favorable direction. Our operating parameters, including speed, feed, depth of cut, and width of cut, all contribute to tool deflection and allow us some control over the situation. Finally, our tool path can be optimized using a strategic approach to minimize deflection. We'll touch a bit on each of these factors throughout this training video. So we can say with confidence that the tool diameter and tool length are critical factors when working to deal with tool deflection. That being the case, we know then that two things we can do to help ourselves are to use the largest tool diameter and the shortest length cutting tool that the application will allow. Now this can go against the grain for some programmers who might like to use whatever tool will get the most work done and bring the part closest to finished size. For optimum efficiency and the least trouble in deep pocket or long reach milling applications, it's best to do the initial roughing work with larger and shorter tools, progressing gradually to the smaller and longer tools only when and where necessary. Modern cutting tools come not just in various sizes and shapes, but also in various materials. The most common choice for indexable milling is a steel body, which is inexpensive and flexible, making it a good choice for general roughing. But the flexibility can be a liability in long reach applications. A carbide core tool is a good compromise, providing better resistance to deflection while still maintaining the toughness required for roughing applications. Carbide core is somewhat more expensive than steel, but not significantly so. Heavy metal is even more dense and does a good job of resisting deflection and dampening vibrations, but it is expensive, sometimes more so than carbide, and can bend permanently if it suffers a strong enough blow. Carbide is the stiffest choice for cutting tool material and is the most commonly used material for round tools. Carbide is also available for many indexable cutter bodies, but these are generally recommended for semi-finishing and finishing applications. Carbide is a costly option and will break if it encounters excess radial or side tool pressure. If you have an upcoming long reach application to run, choose your cutting tool type carefully. Tools with a 90 degree cutting edge like regular end mills and APKT style indexable tools generate primarily radial or side cutting forces. This can make them a poor choice where long reach tooling is needed. Tools with a very slight entering angle like the high feed cutter shown on the right tend to generate more axial cutting forces than radial, making them a very good choice for long reach milling applications. The design of tools like these allows for very aggressive machining parameters in spite of their long length. Note that the same square insert shell mill is shown on both categories. When used like a profile milling 90 degree cutter, this tool is a poor choice for long reach milling. But when used as a plunge mill, 
The axial forces created with the drilling motion of the Z-axis make it an excellent choice for long reach work. Another tool choice can be helpful for long reach applications, but requires purposeful programming to make it work well. Button cutters are notoriously strong cutting tools due to their lack of any sharper corners that would be vulnerable under heavy loads or vibration. But if taking a deeper depth of cut with a button style cutter, the programmer is creating high radial cutting forces, which won't generally work well for long reach tools. However, if the tool is operated at a lighter depth of cut, the cutting forces are more axial in nature, allowing the tool to run more effectively and quietly. This is a unique and often helpful feature of button tools, the ability to run the tool efficiently using multiple methods. Be sure though when running a light depth of cut with a button cutter to increase your feed rate. This is due to chip thinning, which we'll cover in an upcoming video. Another factor to consider in tool selection is pitch, or the number of teeth in the cut. One of the main things we're going to want to do to reduce deflection is to reduce cutting forces. Having many teeth in the cut can be very good for productivity when the cutting tool is short, but the more teeth in the cut, the more tool pressure that we're creating. For long reach milling, using a coarse pitch tool instead of a fine pitch tool can help a great deal in reducing tool pressure. In our diagram, both cutting tools are engaged at about 50% width of cut, but the coarse pitch tool on the left has only one tooth in the material at any given time, while the fine pitch tool on the right has two teeth engaged. The tool on the right will deflect more than the tool on the left if we're working with a long length tool. Remember from video number five, choosing your cutting geometry, that there are multiple cutting edge types available, especially for indexable tooling. Each type of cutting edge has its own characteristics, one of which is the tool pressure it creates. Choosing a relatively sharper cutting edge can help keep cutting forces down, reducing deflection. But be careful not to run too hard of a grade of carbide in this case. The long reach potential for chatter or bouncing may damage the cutting edge, so using a tougher grade of carbide will help protect your cutting tool from damage when going to a sharper edge tool. We can also control deflection through the cutting parameters we program our tool to run at. Some of these will make sense and some of them may seem counterintuitive. In general, we'll see better performance from our long reach tools when we use more speed, feed per tooth, and width of cut. Where we'll make the most sacrifice is in the depth of cut. Now we'll explain each of these factors separately in the upcoming slides. We use the term stability windows for speed ranges where a long reach end mill can perform to greater efficiency. Studies have shown that in many cases, the higher RPM ranges can actually provide more stability, meaning more depth of cut capability and better resistance to chatter. This will have diminishing return in regards to tool life, but it is important to understand that using a long reach tool doesn't necessarily mean that you have to slow things down. In fact, you may find that you'll have better consistency and a larger window of smooth operation when you instead speed the RPMs up. For indexable tooling, each type of cutting edge has a recommended feed per tooth range for its edge prep, and good tool performance is dependent on running the cutter within that recommended range. It's a common mistake for operators to slow the feed down when running a long reach tool. This is a mistake because very often, slowing the cutter's feed rate down may mean taking the cutter below the range it's designed to operate in, meaning the cutter may be rubbing or even bouncing off of the part surface rather than cutting as it's designed to do. Instead of slowing down the feed rate, leave the feed rate where it is or even increase slightly and instead reduce depth of cut to lower tool pressure. One aspect of long reach milling that is often overlooked is what direction is the deflection force coming from? If your width of cut is only a small portion of the tool diameter, then all of your deflection force is coming from one side. This allows the tool to push away from the side the cutting is happening on, promoting deflection. 
If instead your width of cut puts material on both sides of tool center line, now you're creating offsetting deflection force, which can help to stabilize the tool in the cut. For this reason, we often instruct customers to program for 60 to 70% width of cut as a target for long reach milling applications, just like you ideally would for short reach cuts. One quick tip we can offer that can save you trouble in long reach milling is to make sure you're rounding your corners through the cam software. In this diagram, we see on the right the typical result of a can cycle pocketing routine which stuffs the cutter radius into an inside corner. When this happens, the machine tool is forced to come to a stop before heading off at a 90 degree directional change. This pause in motion, however quick it might be, creates a prime opportunity for chatter. If instead a rounding radius is input into the program toolpath options, even a small radius at 10 to 15% of the tool diameter, the tool will gradually transition through the corner, keeping tool pressure more constant and removing the opportunity for chatter, which ruins part finish and hurts tool life. Finally, recall from our video on climb milling versus conventional milling that a conventional cut can actually be helpful in long reach milling or where a long end mill is being used. A climb cut tends to push a cutter away while a conventional cut tends to pull the cutting tool into the material. When milling with a long cutting tool, chatter can develop due to a bouncing effect from the tool pressure of climb milling. If a conventional approach is used instead, the tendency to pull the tool into the material can actually have a stabilizing effect on the cutting tool, smoothing out much of the chatter. This is most often noticed when a partial width of cut is being taken, less than 50% of the tool diameter. But be careful, since the tool will likely pull into the material, be sure that enough finish stock has been left in the program to prevent from cutting the part undersize. We've given you several good options for overcoming your long reach milling challenges. Hopefully you found one or more of those helpful for your application. As always, with any questions, email us at info at and check back with us soon for more milling training from DAPRA.